Oh, okie doke. I'll try to keep um, the hand as little jerky as possible and um, try to focus on what the, the screen is seeing. There's a ton of stuff going on. Uh, I'm so flipping happy. I did not... Well, I've been nibbling at this, you know, month in, month out, um, staring at the uh, at, uh, what I'm going to do with the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, and, um, you know, I, well, some of you guys remember that uh, the, the Russians and the Ottomans have signed a non-aggression pact, and part of that, well, it helps both sides out massively, obviously, and, and the big thing is, is that way up here, is that... Um, I've really um, stripped the, the cupboard bare, more or less, for the Caucasus army. Um, there's not very many. I, it's basically just two cores up there that are just taking, uh, taking it up uh, for, for the Turks there. And then the rest of the... And, well, obviously, the first army, obviously, I had to leave, up in, uh, leave in Constantinople. I did take some troops, though, out of them and some supply. But um, I was able to uh, go over the Develtkrieg uh, duration, all fronts for uh, Osmanli Harbi. And from there, I was able to figure out, okay, um, what armies can I take, uh, or what forces can I take from the Caucasus uh, front, basi uh, front, basically, and bring them towards uh, Mesopotamia and Palestine for, for, the, uh, for the Turks. Um, so that's where where we're going. I also yet again that beautiful book marked for death. Uh, sorry, order to die. Uh, that's another book mar marked for death. Uh, order to die. Um, it's got some great maps. I was able to take a look and uh, see historically where the garrisons were. So you can see here. So I decided to pop in some of the um, uh, the infantry regiments. Um, yeah, and that's where the second army headquarters is going to be uh, in Damascus. And um, starting, like I said, now I can start figuring out, of, I know which corps uh, the second army is going to uh, be assigned to uh, with. And um, it's wonderful. I don't know if you can see those little blue things. So those are the um, spots right here that um, the Brits uh, can go. I think we're going to go for this spot here. It just makes uh, the most sense. Um, but yet now their British intelligence knows there are some garrison troops there. That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, what else can I tell you? Over here, I'm not completely stupid. Well, like, well, not completely stupid. In that, uh, so over here, Third Army uh, in uh, Mosul is just basically going to be um, a hub. Uh, and there's where a reinforcement spot is. That's why I've got the little R there. And that's basically, I'm going to keep, keep some troops there, uh, but they're going to hopefully be able to, yeah, and this is the problem with these fronts. Uh, this area is, uh, yeah, oh yeah, the Ottomans, uh, the Turks can bring a ton of troops, and there's going to be tons of them around here. It doesn't mean I can get them to the the, the spots that I want to get them to, because the logistics and the tr the travel, and uh, it's... There's so many restrictions, so many constraints to moving uh, troops. I mean, you can't have so you know, the stacking limit is, uh, is reduced in the desert and so on and so forth. There's a lot of attrition. Uh, so, it's yeah, there's going to be a ton of forces, but it doesn't mean they can all be put to use in one shot. Uh, there's, so, so like I said, there's Third Army. It's got just a couple of cores, and they're more or less just, yet again, just going to be like a... Um, a link up a hub uh, and uh, things go pear-shaped in one direction uh, can you know start at least getting the ball rolling somehow uh, and then over here we've got uh, the fourth army it's gonna be in Baghdad that's gonna be in charge of uh, the whole shebang I did switch up the I was uh, originally going to uh, start converting because uh, these are unfinished rails so this is where the railhead is but I can uh, bring I can start doing some rail that way. I'm actually going to now start trying to construct it from Baghdad to Kut. Uh, it's going to take a long time, um, but that's the way it goes. Um, and here you can see I've popped in some cores over here that are going to take take up the slack, hopefully. And that's where I've got some uh, infantry regiments for now. Um, and then I get to populate. Look at this. So that's that's uh, essentially. I mean, some of this has already been, you know, all those infantry regiments are basically taken up. But that's a lot of infantry divisions, man, that I get to, to play around with. And there's going to be, obviously, the, the engineering regiment's going to be popped on over here. What else? I did make some notes. So, uh, yes, I was a bit concerned I was not going to be invited again to the writer's workshop. But they did send me an invite for tomorrow. So, I'm, so I am um, 
going to be doing that, thank goodness, because I'm absolutely adoring it. And I'm going to say this is also about uh, note taking. So I'm about to finish. I have two notebooks at the, uh, two notebooks going always at the same time. One is a play by play, uh, um, you know, writing down all the moves and so on and so forth. I've been slacking off a little bit at the end, and it's going to bite me in the ass uh, later if I want to start getting into bringing some of those bits of the narrative in. However. Uh, Boy, oh boy, did it help. So I've got, and then I've got my normal everyday journal. I just write uh, anything that's game related kind of thing. And of course now I'm doing this. I've got this journal going on here. But here's the, th the, the beauty of it was that I decided, okay, I'm going to pick the 32nd Infantry Division near the Boog River Bridge for uh, Zoe Popova. And this past week I've been just going through the notes uh, to collate all the instances of the... Uh, the the 32nd Infantry Division, and trust me, there's a ton, a ton here. It's just fantastic, and I'm like, look at this, it's just like, I'm like, yay, you smart little devil. Um, yeah, uh, look at this, it just keeps on trucking. I think this is it, uh, that's, so yeah, this is just normal me to start talking about uh, her and how I'm going to go uh, about it. So I'm really happy that I did that uh, with the note-taking stuff. Uh, okay, and I did do notes for this. Uh, also about this here, I'm gonna try to slowly slinker on over here. I don't wanna drive Leo nuts, he's, under the, he's on the couch right below you here. Uh, so this bit here, I'm also uh, a member I've mentioned before about uh, doing a uh, neutral nations uh, interactive with people such as Charles Latora you know, represents Italy, um, Poor Meandering Mike represents Albania. William Aarons represents uh, Greece. Uh, Clark Commando 1983 represents Bulgaria. I just need one more for Romania. Anyway, so this is, and I decided how much, like, it was not working the way I wanted it to work, kind of thing, in the sense that it's like, well, people have got other things to do for crying out loud and so on and so forth. Um, the world doesn't revolve around my uh, game, which even it, it, for me, it, you know, for, only for me it does, kind of thing. Um, so I'm like, what I'm going to do is just voice out the stuff in some kind of, I don't know, in community posts or videos or whatever and get, and see if there's, you know what I mean? If any of the people go, yay or nay, or I don't, I'll just, uh, go from there and we'll see how it goes. But that was just one of the things that, uh, you can't see, but maybe you can see the before. So this is the before map for the strategic map. You're going to see a bit here. There's where Libya is and there was a contested area there with the French and so on and so forth. And then obviously, as we know, uh, way up there, um, there was two spots that Italy wants um, over on uh, across on the Adriatic and way up north between uh, the border of, uh, well, would, it, would end up, they would have a border with Germany if, uh, if Austria-Hungary got out of the way kind of thing here. And guess what? They did. See, as you can see here. Uh, but not here. I'm a Kevin in the Adriatic, and I also uh, popped in here. This is a part of the deal uh, that uh, that's why I wanted to get uh, Tommaso uh, to Tony to um, or get Charles to get uh, get on the blower so he can talk to Tommaso to Tony, who happens to be the uh, ambassador in France for Italy. And when I looked at, into his background, he's got some ties with North Africa and so on and so forth. He was. Uh, uh, a pretty pro-colonialist, uh, was not, um, wanted to keep good relations with the central powers and so on and so forth. And I went, oh, okay, you're a good one for me. Um, and what I ended up deciding to do is I understand that, that Italy's not going to join the central powers straight up. Charles of Torres made that perfectly clear. But I want them to play ball a bit more. Uh, and that was part of this deal here. We'll give you all this crazy nonsense territory if we win and so on and so forth. But we need you to do some fun stuff for us, such as, um, quite frankly, we need you to do some stuff such as smuggle uh, coal and oil for us. Uh, and we'll, um, we'll do it on the sly in the Mediterranean kind of thing. We'll just, uh, uh, basically, we need you to be a uh, coal and diesel fuel uh, launderer for us so that way we can uh, not you know bypass like I'm trying to figure out ways that yes okay the blockade is happening the, the uh, Great Britain and so on and so forth have a fantastic uh, control over the seas how can I use that to my still to my advantage and it's like well guess what they've got a lot of neutrals out there that they're letting 
people do uh, things here. We'll go towards this game. At least you can see something a bit better than whatever. Uh, there's Twinkles um, scratching. And he's trying to give me the hint. But uh, yeah, that's it. Did I make any other notes? Uh, yep, yeah, uh, framework going forward. It's uh, I'm really happy the way it's going. It's still going to take some time uh, when I incorporate the grand campaign for 19, uh, January 1915. But it's getting there. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to chit chat about quickly? Uh, no, this is just the last turn. I've got everybody set up. I have to start looking at uh, Sometimes I'm getting a bit overwhelmed. But it's the last turn for the Russians. This is it. Um, I'm surprised there's a fair amount of strength points sitting around there. And there's the Boog River Bridge. That's going to be a dandy. Um, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> if the, if the Russians aren't going to try to cross it, trust me. They just want to, you know, hunker down. But uh, I've got to figure out this, that, or the other. It's going to be a lot tricky. Um, yeah, it's going to be tricky. <sighs> but uh, that's is it. Um, and then, uh, like I said, four days from now, I go to Can Games, and I'm just going to lose my flipping marbles as per usual. That's it. Oh, I will show you this again. I'll, I'll try to go nice and slow. Hello, Leo. He's over there. Is this thing that I found, which I think is really uh, neat to do, and I'm going to do it more often. It's this thing I found on, online there. Are your objectives smart? Um, and it's just like, you know, uh, does the objective include an observable action or achievement? And on and on and on. I'm like, perfect. This is exactly what I'm going to try to do when I start making decisions uh, as a general in my game and so on and so forth. That's it. Um... Just tons of bubbling up potential energy going. Uh, I just, uh, I'm having a great old time. And uh, that's it. I hope you guys are too. See ya.